Welcome to the Grateful American series, an interactive multimedia program designed to restore enthusiasm in American history for kids and adults too. Creator of this series is David Bruce Smith, an author and publisher here in Washington, D.C. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host, founder of Incandescent Public Relations and Incandescent TV. Hello and welcome to the Grateful American series, an interactive multimedia project designed to restore enthusiasm in American history for kids and adults. And to that end, we are here on Mulberry Row on Thomas Jefferson's Monticello with historian Krista Dirkside. Did I say that right? You did. <laughs> so first, give us a little background on you. How did you get interested in the topic of slavery? Well, you know, slavery is a really difficult um, and problematic topic and not something I ever saw myself getting into, but when I was studying American history in college and in grad school, I really felt that slavery was the question, the difficulty facing slave owners, uh, patriots in the revolutionary age, and I was interested in probing that problem, that dilemma that they faced. Um, in the age of revolutions, and that's how I got sort of drawn into it. Um, and my work has really been about trying to figure out why this was an unsolved uh, problem for most of early American history. What did Jefferson do to deal with the problem of slavery? Well, Jefferson realized at a very young age that slavery was fundamentally a violation of a person's natural rights. Um, but he also realized that eradicating an institution that was sanctioned by law would be a very, very difficult proposition indeed. Um, but when he became a young lawyer in Virginia, which we should remember was a colony in the British Empire, um, he took on several freedom suits in which he tried to exploit loopholes in common law, um, which would allow him to emancipate enslaved oftentimes mixed-race individuals. However, even he realized that he was up against an enormous, enormous opposition. And so he realized that it would take decades or maybe even a century to undo what he called this abomination. So can you tell us uh, what kind of slave owner was Jefferson? How did he treat his slaves? Well, Jefferson, by all accounts, was a much better master um, than most. He, he tried to, if not abolish the use of the whip and corporal punishment, he tried to minimize it. Um, so he never uh, whipped any slaves himself or ordered any corporal punishment himself. But we do know that when he was absent from Monticello that many slaves were whipped by overseers um, on the outlying farms. And that is an unfortunate part of uh, what was Monticello during Jefferson's lifetime. What was Jefferson's relationship with the slaves? We know from the memoir of Madison Hemings that Jefferson was very little concerned in agricultural pursuits, but preferred uh, the manufacturers, what he called his shops. So he actually, when he was present, um, would go to the nailery every day and weigh nail rod and assess the efficiency of these young enslaved nail boys. I mean, he was tremendously, tremendously involved in what he considered light industry on the plantation. It is correct that he freed 10 slaves. Right? Yes, so he freed two men in his lifetime. He manumitted them. Uh, three slaves were allowed to run away and they weren't pursued. And then in his will, he freed five slaves. So a total of 10 slaves, but that's a very small fraction of the 607 individuals that he owned in his lifetime. How is he remembered by those people? Are there any documents suggesting? Well, we have four memoirs from um, former Monticello slaves, and those all do give a positive view of Jefferson. I think there's a lot that you can read between the lines. Um, for example, one of the memoirs recounts the conversation between the Marquis de Lafayette and Jefferson about the topic of slavery. And the Marquis de Lafayette is portrayed as being in favor of immediate in emancipation of these people. I mean, this is a horrible institution that should be ended immediately. And Jefferson is instead is recounted as being says, saying, yes, it's a horrible institution, but we can't end it yet. You know, we have to alleviate it and think about this um, before we do it. 
And so without really saying too much, you can see that for that particular slave, the Marquis de Lafayette was perhaps more of a hero than Jefferson himself. Yeah, it's fascinating and a complicated topic. You know, it's very emotional, but you've mm -hmm. explained it so beautifully. And we'll look forward to learning more about this and discussing it further with you as we, as we progress with the Grateful American series. Well, thank you so much. I've enjoyed speaking with you thank today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we are here on Mulberry Row at Monticello. You are watching the Grateful American series an interactive multimedia project designed to restore enthusiasm in American history and hopefully you learned something important today. Thank you and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for being with us. You are watching The Grateful American TV Show, a video production of David Bruce Smith's Grateful American Foundation. Watch more episodes at www.gratefulamericantv.com and follow our TV show, radio show, monthly newsletter, and upcoming books at our website, www.gratefulamericanfoundation.com. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host. On behalf of David Bruce Smith and myself, we look forward to restoring enthusiasm in American history for you and your kids. We'll talk to you soon.